These are the ruins of St. Paul's. This used to be the most beautiful cathedral. However, from the wall that remains, the characteristics of Macau are fully evident. The motifs and themes of the cathedral originated from Western religion. Chinese patterns featuring lions, Japanese patterns with chrysanthemums, and other patterns symbolizing Oriental cultures can also be seen here. Macau was the place where Eastern and Western cultures met for the first time in East Asia. Macau was an important port on the Southern Silk Road. On this stretch of land, different cultures coexisted and interacted with each other. The cultures of China, Southeast Asia, India, Africa, Latin America and Europe all gathered in Macau. They were like dazzling gems in a jewelry box. Macau is in fact the place where Eastern and Western people lived in harmony for the longest time in East Asia. People of different ethnicities peacefully shared this narrow space regardless of their differences. In Macau, the East and West merged seamlessly. Macau, nearly the southernmost point of China's territory, and Hong Kong are now called China's special administrative regions. Macau consists of the tip of the Pearl River Delta and two islands on the Pearl River. Its total area is less than 30 square kilometers. Despite its small area, however, there are more than 30 World Heritage Sites in this place, including 22 historic buildings and eight squares. In the 16th century, the Portuguese came here to spread Christianity and conduct business. Afterwards, Macau flourished as a center for trade between the East and the West. At the same time, the Portuguese built churches to propagate religion. On this land, the cathedral played a key role in the preaching of Christianity. Christians in China, Japan, and the Korean Peninsula, and on the islands bordering China, 
were under the influence of the cathedral. Macau used to be the gateway for Christianity in East Asia. Many missionaries arrived in Macau from across the sea, and they had churches built that were distinctive. St. Joseph's seminary and church was a center of preaching for the whole of East Asia. How to train priests became a new and important task. In 1728, a full-time seminary was built. Then, in 1758, the church was built next to the seminary. This Protestant cemetery was the first burial ground built for Protestants in Macau. This chapel is named after the British missionary Robert Morrison. Morrison was the first man to translate the Bible into Chinese. On stained glass windows, the phrase, in the beginning was the word, was translated into classical Chinese. The Cathedral of St. Paul's, a center for spreading the gospel, witnessed the development of the Western religion in Macau and on the Chinese mainland. Today, the ruins of St. Paul's show off Macau's past glory. In its time, the cathedral was known as the most beautiful Western church in the East. Only this remaining facade survived a major disturbance that occurred in the year 1835. What remains of St. Paul's is a magnificent piece of Christian architecture. Looking from the top downward, the Trinity in Christianity is exhibited on the first and second tiers. The Father, the young Jesus, and multiple engravings implying miseries, death, and resurrection are found on both sides. Hope to display a close relationship between Christianity and the spirit and life of the people in those countries. This also shows the face of Macau as an international metropolis. The building is also the earliest Western university in China. Macau witnessed a burgeoning of Western culture in China, and it was a place where Westerners learned about Eastern cultures. Macau is like a cultural intersection. Here, people learn from the cultures of other people, and they lived an harmonious life here for hundreds of years. Such harmony can still be felt today. In the Portuguese colonies downtown, 
There remains a mansion of a wealthy Chinese businessman. The same features in buildings left by the Portuguese. Guaya Fortress, which served as Macau's fortifications, was completed in the year 1638. The first lighthouse in the Chinese coastal region was completed in 1865, and it still guides passing ships. Next to the lighthouse is the Chapel of Our Lady of Guaya. In this western church, Chinese-style wall paintings can be seen. This indicates the respect of the Portuguese for Chinese culture. Via Macau, a port on the Southern Silk Road, European medicine, Indian pepper, and Japanese silver were shipped to China's mainland. Silk, pottery, and tea from the mainland were transported to other countries via Macau. India was another important trade post on the Southern Silk Road extending to Europe. World Heritage Sites in Macau also manifest Indian features. This building is in the style of buildings in Goa, a Portuguese colony in India. A ventilated corridor is designed to adapt to the subtropical climate. Approximately 200 people from India served as policemen. The terminus of the Southern Silk Road was, of course, Europe. In the history of European-Asian trade, the British East India Company left an indelible mark. This building was used as its headquarters. Businessmen from all over the world gathered in Macau and they demanded social venues and recreational facilities. Dom Pedro V Theatre, the first Western-style theatre in China, was built accordingly. As an east-west commercial stronghold, Macau gradually flourished.
People from all corners came here, and so a unique blend of culture came into being. The Spanish painter Charles Chaudelot lives in Macau. His paintings exhibit a union of Chinese and Western arts. When he first saw the traditional Chinese paintings, he was immediately attracted by their unique Through his painting, Charles Chaudelot traces Macau's past. In ancient times, Macau's people made a living on the sea. To the fishermen, boats were essential. Their lives were sustained by the sea. Since those ancient times, the people of Macau have worshipped a sea goddess. This temple is dedicated to Mazu, the sea goddess worshipped by the Macanese people. Ever since the 14th century, a grand ceremony has been held in this temple on the birthday of the sea goddess. This is Mazu, the goddess of the sea in the hearts of the local people. One day, some fishermen went out fishing. A storm suddenly arose on the sea. Mazu, in the shape of a girl, calmed the raging storm. Under her auspices, the fishermen safely returned to port. 16th century, as the Portuguese landed on the shore of Macau after a hard voyage, the Ama Temple came into view. For this reason, they called the earth Mazu, the name of the deity enshrined in the temple. This is the origin of the name Macau.
The Portuguese traveled great distances to preach their sermons, and so they called the land the city of the name of God. But at that time, it took two to three years to travel by sea from Lisbon to Macau. Almost half of the ships that made the attempt would be lost due to storms. Without a doubt, the Portuguese merchants on the sea at that time also worshipped this goddess of the sea. This is St. Anthony's Church, completed in the middle of the 16th century. It is one of the oldest churches in Macau. Here, the Portuguese enshrined their most prestigious sage, St. Anthony of the Seafarers. The Portuguese had a strong affinity with the sea. In the center of Macau is Senado Square. Occupying one corner of the square is the Holy House of Mercy. Built in 1569, the building was an asylum for relatives of seafarers who had died in shipwrecks. As one of the oldest welfare institutes in Asia, it has close relations with the sea. On this land, various world religions coexisted on a very narrow strip of land. Only in Macau can one enjoy the feast of the drunken dragon. It's said that an inebriated monk cut a dragon in half and that its blood flowed into the rivers. The river water then became a cure for all diseases. To express gratitude to the dragon, a festival is held each year. spirit has been passed on from generation to generation. In Macau, throughout history, different cultures encountered each other on this vital intersection on the Southern Silk Road. Here, people of different colors and creeds came together. Their living habits, backgrounds, and traditions bred a unique culture. In Macau, countless people overcame national and religious barriers to develop their own lives as well as friendships. People created an harmonious coexistence, a coexistence which forms the intangible heritage of the charming city of Macau. In Macau, Eastern and Western cultures enhance each other's beauty, and with this, a small, beautiful world has been created. This piece of land is a dazzling pearl in the East.